Cool. Hey, uh, what's up, Nick, man? Thanks for joining us on Red River Podcast, um, where we talk movies, music, and pop culture. And, uh, you know, a little backstory. I mean, I didn't really know you. And we yeah. played we played that set, and I was like, this guy's awesome. Like, anyone who's wearing a jacket that says Haddonfield, you know, hospital, Memorial Hospital, I'm just like, oh, this guy's fucking mad cool. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, man. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely the same, bro. You know, I was uh, drawn to you that night. I'm like, dude, this guy's fucking great. They have a great, you know, songs that they're playing. I'm yeah. having a... And uh, then we added each other on, like facebook and i'm like man crushing i'm like dude this guy talks my language man. yeah yeah very so, very very much so and i think i met your drummer before you because we ended up playing beery's what was that it was like a long ass show right like maybe... it was a, uh yeah he played uh, with his the other band that he's in there was a uh some kind of halfway to halloween show that's what it was yeah and he yeah. told me about you guys he's like dude you're gonna love these guys if you ever get a chance to see them Okay. And Tom, you know, I'm fr- I've been friends with Tom for a while. And uh, he said that you guys were playing. I'm like, oh, you know what, man? I'm going to come and check that out. So cool. Yeah. Great- yeah. T- Tom Bennett's the shit for sure. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, man. And then from there, just like, uh, you know, the conventions that you're hitting, like, just basically, it's, it, I felt like I'm like, yeah, we're basically into the same stuff. So when you hit me up about doing this episode, um i just thought like that's perfect i'm like let's fucking do it so um the topic today was we picked five actors um that we like and then we wanted to discuss like one specific role of theirs whether it's tv movies whatever um where they crushed it or that we love them and maybe could be somewhat underrated or not uh and then another film or TV uh, show where they play a role that we haven't gotten a chance to see because, you know, these days, like, we're crushed by fucking shit to watch. It's like, like, next thing you know, it's like, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, like, uh, Sylvester Stallone has a show on, like, Paramount Plus, and people are like, what the fuck is Paramount Plus? It's like, oh, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> Tegan and Sarah have a really cool show on Freebie. It's like, whoa, it's like, I can't even keep up right now. I know. I've been dying to watch the new Weird Al thing, and I've uh, just haven't had the opportunity because I don't have Roku, so okay. I have to like get one of those little adapters. I think. Nah, nah, you don't. So all you need because um, I w- I wanted to watch it too. So I just downloaded the app. If you have a smart TV or even on your phone, you just download the Roku app. Yeah. And it plays it automatically. Oh, perfect. All right, yeah. cool. So I, I started watching it, and it had um. I noticed the dad was played by. Toby Huss. Now, Toby Huss, like you know that dude or that name? I knew you know him, but maybe you don't know the name. I don't know the name. So he played the father in the new Halloween, the one who got killed. Oh, okay, okay. But he was also in like, if you remember Vegas Vacation, uh, he was the one selling the ID cards, Nick Papa Giorgio. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> like <laughs> like on on MTV, he would do those like uh like Sinatra like mockups and thing. Like if you saw him, yes. like, oh, wow, that's the same guy. I that's the even... same guy. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny, dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's in it. All right, cool. That's, yeah, that's for sure. Cool. Um, cool, man. So listen, uh, maybe Langan will make it. Maybe Langan won't. He's having some issues right now. Uh, oh, let me see. Does this work? Wow, iPhone 27. That's crazy. We're in the future. Yeah, I'm doing my iPhone right now. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I was going to do my laptop, but I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I already have. Nah, as long as we can see that Def Leppard, man, for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. We're playing Beery's Friday with uh, a friend of mine, and he plays in a Def Leppard tribute band, which I, I've yet to see, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty curious. Is it Lee? Yeah, it's Lee. Oh, dude, my Lee, I know for years. He was oh, in a, okay, cool. Uh, he was in a band with my old guitarist, with Evan Seinfeld. Oh, Evan. Okay, yeah, I didn't know. What, what right. did you and Evan do? Uh, no, I wasn't in a band. My friend was the guitarist for that band. It was the okay. name of the Fighters. But uh, Lee's, uh, Lee was the drummer for that, and he's a 
He's an amazing drummer. Yeah, he's a monster, man. He uh, and he could sing backup. He's ve- he's a very talented guy. Yeah, super talented. Yeah, big big motherfucker like back there for sure. Yeah. Um, so yo, he let loved, uh, he loves Stallone too. So I could talk uh, Sly with him all day. There you go, Langan. Yo, I'm on well, my phone. Yeah, welcome. Dude, shit in the bed. Shit in the bed. So uh, this is Nick. That's Brian. Hey man, what? how you doing? Um, yeah, man. I, so, you know, I yapped a lot as usual, so we're, we're going to get right into it. Um, so l- let's go with Bill Paxton first. I fucking love Bill Paxton. Um, here's a guy that has like at least 10 to 15 movies that I could watch at any time. Uh, I can't believe he's gone. Um, you know, his son, I, I, I went to a video shoot. Uh, in Comswag High School that R.A. the Rugged Man was doing. And uh, so <laughs> I was like, who the hell is this kid that's acting in the role? And it was Bill Paxton's son that was in the role because he became friends with like R.A. the Rugged Man. And uh, it, it was just a trip, man. He just all the stories that he tells about his dad makes him seem real cool. Big hip hip hop fan, uh, big music fan. So uh, I, I wanted to basically touch upon his shit, man. And uh, Langan. You got Bill Paxton. Give, give me a role of his that you think is underrated or you love. I think, um, I mean, the movie got a lot of attention and mainly Billy Bob Thornton gets all the attention, but a simple plan from 1998. Um, Paxton, such an important part, like a moral center of that film and how, you know, his morals fall apart. And I, 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 he didn't get nominated for anything, but Billy Bob, rightfully so, Billy Bob was great in it and stuff. But I think people sleep on how good Paxton is in that movie. Very true. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Johnny come lately to that movie. I've probably watched it for the first time in like the last 10 years. And uh, mm-hmm. it's fucking great. You see that one, Nick? Yes. Yeah, no, I agree with him, man. Like, I feel like Bill Paxton is one of those dudes where he's in a supporting role, but he propels the his cast to their you know they got to be on their game and like bring their best and i because like he is the man he can uh and he's a chameleon dude because he can always play something different every time he uh showed up on the screen for sure you know um yo langan so give me uh give me something that you feel uh that you want to watch that you haven't from his catalog so many i mean i've seen so many films on there it was it's hard to pick one but one film that he did that everybody saw but me was tombstone oh okay yeah Never that's a good one it. yeah I don't know. Heard it's good i think a lot of times uh anything set in the west it just i tune out a lot me i don't too. know like i'm not a big western guy whatsoever so yeah. that's probably i never saw it but i probably should so, yeah, okay, that movie's awesome, and I'm with you. I'm fucking with you, but I think around that time, maybe, like, two years before The Unforgiven came out with... That uh, was great, yeah. So, but, like, I just... I have a mental block against Wester. <laughs> <laughs> but Tombstone is fucking great. Unforgiven is great. Uh, yeah, the, but I completely get you, yeah. But uh, you should watch it. it it's, it's very cool. I, actually, unless we're talking about Young Guns, because Young Guns was a shit, so. I think that's the best <laughs> Western of all time. It might be, right? I think so, right? Hey, it is. And even Young Guns too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Arkansas Dave. So uh <laughs> Nick, let's do Bill Paxton. Give me like a movie uh role of his that you uh love or think is underrated. So originally I was gonna go frailty, and I feel like it's not even like I don't think a lot of people have seen it, but it's an amazing thing, but I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to give it an honorable mention. But the role that I love Bill Paxton in is the Dick brother in Weird Science. It's Chet. Chet. He's such an asshole. Uh, <laughs> he's a magnificent asshole, though. Yeah. You know, just his little... I don't even know how much screen time he has in that movie, but he makes the best of every minute, second that he's in that movie. You he's know, a, he's, in the, he's in there quite a bit. I just recently did a rewatch. And, uh, cool uh, as and fuck he, too. So good. Yeah, I love the part where he uh, he comes home with the shotgun and he's like getting them out of bed and stuff, and he like he has it on like I think it's uh, Anthony Michael Hall, and then like he just takes the gun and like just 
bangs the chick in the head and goes back to fucking Anthony Michael Hall. It's like, get up, where's my brother? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, so, and I just I just rewatched that and and for some reason I didn't really ever put two and two together that Wyatt and Gary both kind of kissed Kelly LeBrock. And I'm just thinking like, <laughs> God damn, I'm like, they must have been like 15 or 16. <laughs> it's just fucking so weird to fuck. Absolutely. See I don't think it would there's no way that movie could be made under these terms now, you know. Like, I, the way- I, I, I'm sure you can. You just have to like prevent like the fucking age gap of like because I'm like really watching Kelly LeBrock who looks amazing in this movie. And uh, listen, I don't give a fuck. I'm an animal. I'm a Neanderthal. But even yeah. watching a 15 year old make out with a 25 year old in a movie, I'm just like, ah, I'm like, I don't remember this. I don't remember yeah. this much tongue being involved. I think that was a gift. From John Hughes to those yeah. boys. Oh yeah, those guys. <laughs> Listen, evil, evil did not die that night. That's all. Uh, no. <laughs> but uh, all right, so give me a movie or a role that Paxton did that you still haven't seen. All right, uh, this is one that probably everybody saw, but I have not, and uh, it's Apollo thirteen. Yeah, I've never seen it. I don't know. Uh, maybe yeah. space, space exploration like without like alien shit and like you know i guess <laughs> jason i don't want to watch so. yeah, yeah 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 you're right you know you you went from aliens to just exploring space like no thank you we need some yeah, aliens I, I, I heard it's amazing but like it was just never in uh i never had the opportunity to watch it and even if i try to watch it i probably lost attention within the first five minutes cool That's um fun. right what's up is that Ron Howard did that? Yeah, Ron yeah. Howard. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought that motherfucker? Right? Like, <laughs> right. Opie cutting him. That's it. Uh, all right. So uh, my pick is 1992's Trespass. Um, oh. He he did that movie with uh, William Sadler. Um, I just remember watching it in the theater, and it, it like Ice T and Ice Cube in a movie. I was like, what is going on right now? This is so cool. Um, and it right. just. A really cool, like, uh, just just like action crime movie, um, great soundtrack, a, a perfect place and time for a fourteen year old me to sit in a movie theater and watch. You know, uh, I I don't feel like it gets enough shout out or love. I know Davey and the group shouted out in, on Red River Group just recently, and and it got me thinking. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, this, this is a fucking good movie. I, I got to rewatch this again. Uh, and a movie he did in 1984 that people love. And I still haven't. I saw like the first 20 minutes. And it's one of those movies that I'm like, how did I miss this? And I'm still missing it. But uh, Streets of Fire. Oh, yeah. OK. You know, like that's just people fucking love that movie. And I watch like the, like it. I think it's up on Netflix. And it's everything that I love, and for some reason, I just slipped through the fucking cracks. Yeah. Definitely got a big cult following. I'd never seen it either, but I did. I think they covered it on uh, "How Did This Get Made" podcast. I feel like I listened to that, but um, I've never seen it. Yeah, I, I I started watching it 15 minutes in, and it was just everything. I think like Michael Pere is in it, you know. Yeah, it was used with um, Saint Elmo's Fire, another one I never seen, just because yeah. they out around that time and they had all those that's you know, that song though man come on that shit that saying that 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 fucking thing. scene almost far oh my god that song's a killer <laughs> i think the lead singer of uh of fear is in uh streets of fire he is leaving he is, right? yeah. yeah 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 he's been in a bunch of shit like i didn't like i never really noticed it and but then like as time goes on you know what it is back then you're not paying attention to my, maybe you'll look at the back of a video box but mm-hmm. now it's like you watch something and you're like, oh, I want to do a Google search and spread out to like a thousand different movies these people have been in. So it uh, it's so true because you never knew like really who was in the movie. Because the first time I ever saw, I'm going a little off track, but not much. But not the first really. time I ever saw Dream Warriors and Heather Langenkamp showed up in it, my fucking heart almost like exploded. I'm like, oh, she's back. But now you would know that way in advance. You, you know? would know that way in advance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick goes. Nick's been taking a lot of pictures with with some uh, with, with a lot of fucking uh, you know convention uh, crew for sure. And you you just recently took a picture with the girl. Um, man, what was it? She got crushed in the Roach Motel, didn't she? 
No, no, the one that gets shot up with the dope in Dream Warriors. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they had a whole Dream Warriors reunion, and I've met each one of them multiple times. I've been going to conventions since I'm uh, 10 years old, but uh, my friend made this dope poster, uh, dope um, tapestry of her, like, all, like, knifed up and everything. And it says in the background, um, Taryn and Freddie. And I wanted it to... I brought it up to her, and I go by Nizza as my stage name. So I'm like, cross out fucking Freddie and put Nizza. Yeah. And then I had to meet her, so I got it signed and shit. And she's very cool. I love it. Nizza is obviously a playoff Jizz and Rizza. Yes. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I took that when I was in high school, and I was obsessed with Wu Tang. Nothing really has changed. Same. Say, so, yeah, you're talking, you're preaching the choir here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so Nick, you I know you had three of the five that we had. So what, what was a, another name that you had? Uh okay, so the, the two that I brought other than the three. Okay. Um I'm gonna bring out Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, so he he we we had a little mix up, but let let him do Dice Clay because this will be all right. okay. So Obviously, I love Fort Failing, so I can't get enough of Fort Failing. Uh, the cameos, <clears throat> fucking Wayne Newton, you know, just Robert England in a in a non horror role. But he's hello, hello, creep. You know, we did a whole episode. We did. We, you know, we did a whole episode on on Fort Failing. <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I love that movie, man. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. That and Priscilla Press. Like, there's so much, so much about that movie that I love. Vince Neil, I'm a diehard Motley Crue fan, so him dying in the beginning of the movie, just I, I love everything about it. So that's my favorite uh, Dice role. Now, the movie that I had not seen with Dice never actually was made, but there was a rumor, and I don't know where I read it, but originally pitched, when they were pitching Die Hard, they wanted Dice in that role. I don't know where the fuck I read this. I don't know if it's an urban legend or such bullshit. But could you imagine? I don't want to ever change anything about Die Hard because Die Hard's amazing. But could you imagine Dice in the role of John McClane fucking with the terrorists and like calling them up and shit? Like, I would absolutely, it would be another favorite movie of mine. That is, that is an exclusive, really. I feel like we should really hashtag all that stuff to when we drop this episode. Like, <laughs> Like, I think I imagine it. him on the walkie talkie with like Hansi, baby, you're going about it all wrong. I got the detonators. <laughs> oh man, snap, I, snap I, ahead. You're right, clone. Oh, you're right, exactly. I think you have little I, little feet like my sister. <laughs> the brain, the brain smasher in Die Hard. Right, right, exactly. It could have, you know, obviously it wouldn't have been as big as it is now, and one of the greatest christmas movies of all time but you never know because listen when fucking bruce willis took die hard like what did he do moonlighting yeah like yeah, what, no, what... He wasn't back then you know like he was just coming into his own die yeah, hard like... who he was and he wasn't like sh like listen as kids of the 80s like schwarzenegger stallone those arms are like what you wanted in a movie like those guys sold movies that were so out. Like C Cobra is amazing, but let's be honest, it's not really that. <laughs> it's like outrageously stupid, but <laughs> it didn't matter because it was like Stallone and Cobra, right. you know. And I, I guess they took a chance on like Bruce Willis, who was just this like everyday Joe Schmo. So for them to maybe go with Andrew Dice Clay, especially in, in his height of uh, popularity, kind of makes sense. Sure. Yeah. What, what difference yeah, exactly. would it make? So, um, <laughs> all right. So, all of a lot of sense for me. <laughs> that's it. We might have to. We might have to go with that. Uh, Langan. So, give me. Let's do Julianne Moore next. Langan. Julianne. Let me shuffle my papers here. Julianne Moore. Um, an underrated movie of hers, I think, and I I love her work. Boogie Nights is when she first really came to my attention. You know. Me too. And with what a role that is, I mean, perfection. But uh, that scene with her and Roller Girl is oh, best. She made perfect. me want to do cocaine and have red hair. Right? Yeah, I wanted she, to join. <laughs> she knew what she was doing. But uh, for an underrated film, I picked um, 2018's Gloria Bell. Uh, it's an A24 film. 
it's a very like just a simple story. It's about this, you know, divorced woman in her mid fifties trying to find somebody in uh, the dating scene. And uh, um, it's just a very real character with real experiences. It's, there's no, it's just a, a very meaty role for her. Um, and she falls with John Turturro. They have a relationship. I won't say what happens for it, but her performance in it is so perfect. Awesome. I love John. I, I Anything with Totoro is, is awesome for me. Yeah, it's a good role. Uh, what do we have for uh, a role that you'd like to see? Oh, well, my runner up too is uh, uh, still Alice where she had the Alzheimer's. It's a heavy watch. I mean, it's it's depressing as fuck, but uh, she's amazing. Uh, but the thing that I haven't seen and I was meaning to actually over the Halloween season because I watched all the psychos part one through four or whatever. Oh, did I, dude? <laughs> so, and some of them I hadn't seen in a while. And, uh, but that, that's a good series. But anyway, so I'm wait, wait. Like, so Mick, Mick Garris did the fourth one, which I didn't see. Did, was that good? The fourth one? It wasn't bad. It's like that. That's the prequel, I believe, right? Oh, um, yeah. without yeah, Olivia, Olivia Hutt as, uh, as his mother and that yeah it's not bad i mean part two is phenomenal but i digress but anyway so she was in the remake to psycho okay. which i never gave a chance to i never saw it but i feel like i should at some point see i know it got panned the one with vince vaughn and yeah, gus yeah. Van did it and i didn't even know she was in it yeah but, me uh, neither never seen yeah, it she's uh the sister uh, okay okay yeah, yeah. uh I, I don't want to go into the gutter and talk bad but uh there's an overhead shot of when when ann hache gets stabbed and you see ann hache's asshole in all its glory <laughs> what do you <laughs> really? the, yeah that's the uh that's the payoff for the psycho remake is uh as far as i'm concerned <laughs> okay all right hey, listen she had, she had a couple of hot years for sure you know r.i.p yeah uh, man rest in peace ann hache that's a shame for sure i mean to go out like that for sure you're butthole uh, Live forever. Your butthole will live forever. I'm sorry, Lloyd. <laughs> um, all right. So for me, uh, Julianne Moore in, in Assassins. That movie's fucking great. Uh, yeah. No one, no one really ever talks about it. So it's like yeah. um, uh, Antonio Banderas and Stallone. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, they're like competing. They're like, uh, you know, the two best hitmen. Blah blah blah. Um. So yeah, I feel like not a lot of people really ever mention that. So when, when did that come out? To uh, ninety five. Oh okay. wow! Yeah, that was yeah. ninety five. And then, uh, <laughs> so she she made a movie, uh, which I haven't seen, but people really love with Amanda Seyfried called Chloe, in like two thousand nine, where she's yeah, married. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, right. So like she's like married to like Liam Neeson, and uh, I think he's like cheating on her or something like that, right? Something like that. Yeah, it's like a backstory, like. Uh... Man, I can't even remember it, dude. I saw it once. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, but a lot of people just, uh, you know, talk about how good that movie is. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I like to see it. So for sure. That's uh, one of her roles that uh, I got to definitely watch. And I like Amanda Seyfried. I think she, she does a lot of cool stuff, especially now. Like she seems to really work under the radar and, you know, she got some some accolades. Um, her husband is a big punk fan. He followed our band on Instagram. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was just weird. I was like, who is this Tom Sadowski? And like, he was like mad cool to us. That's uh, cool. Yeah, it was just random for sure. Um, so Nick, uh, uh Julian Moore. I, I have, uh, for Julian Moore, I have a role that's, uh, unappreciated and I feel, um, Hannibal. Oh, yeah. It got so much shit when it came out because I understand, man. Like, you know, Silence of the Lambs is one of those movies. It's it's great. Looking back at it, there's some shitty camera choice angles and stuff and like that. But other than, you know, the, the performances of so memorable. And yeah, her as Clarice like was amazing. And that's a that's heavy shoes to fill, man. So I heavy. feel like before they even uh released the movie she was getting a lot of shit and once it even came out like they were ripping it apart but yeah you know, there's some great uh 
great scenes in that movie. She did a good job, I feel, you know, and I feel like that movie's totally underrated. Yeah, it's 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 like a heavy thing to to go in. It's like Gary Sharon replacing uh, you know, Sammy Hagar. It's like uh yeah. you're gonna you're gonna Van get Halen's- <laughs> <laughs> it's like defending uh, you know, Van Halen three, uh, which once again uh, has without you, which is a great song. But yeah, it's it's <laughs> well, we'll... the only concert that I ever walked out of on my own. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. did you really? I... <laughs> yeah, he, he started doing uh, Panama and it was just not what I wanted to see. Like, it was so bad. What was so bad about it? What part of the show is this? How, how long did you make it? <laughs> uh, I made it about. <laughs> Yeah, I, I sat through some stuff. I saw Without You, and I, I saw him do a couple other hits. And then once Panama came on, and he started doing, like, this weird dancing and shit, and I'm like, ah, I love Extreme, dude. Like, I think he's great in Extreme with, you know. But, yeah, Van Van Sharon is definitely not my cup of tea. <laughs> but, yes. Um, man, I think we can we- – we could we could do a whole show on Van Sharon. <laughs> I do love Extreme too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, three sides to every story. He's a great stuff. singer. It just doesn't. Sometimes you put you know two things together, it just ain't happening. You know like what? Paul it, Rogers with Queen. You it, know, I didn't like that either. I yeah. think I think there's there was you needed to knock the Van Halen brothers down a notch because it's like you did it once and you got away with it and it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and do it again. Yeah, so they're like, nah, that's not gonna work. But um, yeah, Hannibal rules. I mean, listen, that iconic. Uh, I don't. I hate her accent, but she had to do the accent. I completely get it. Like, I hated her accent when she did it in Thirty Rock. She did. She had like a a Massachusetts accent. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that killed me. But um, the scene obviously where you know, like, uh, Anthony Hopkins is feeding Ray Liotta his brain. I mean, like, oh, that's, that's right. I mean, you yeah. can't you can't get better than that. What and about? I, Goldman, dude, is Mason Verger, dude. Like he's unbelievable. And, and uh, I think it's the best, the last good one, the last good one. Because like the other two after, like what Red Dragon, oh, they're and... watchable. This shit, right? They were yeah. pretty uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, um, no, uh, so give me something that she's done uh, that you haven't seen yet. I heard a lot about it, and uh, I'd like to see it. And that's uh, Dear Evan Hansen. Okay. You know, I heard it's pretty, you know, serious, but uh, I don't mind the series sometimes. And uh, I'm a fan, so I'd check it out. You know, cool. I'd, I'd like to check. Um, all right. So let's do Nick Cage, Langan. Give me, give me something that you love that Nick Cage has done, which is hard. I think, um, you know, it was, it was a big film, but um, I would say, hold on a second. <laughs> all right. um, oh, by the way, uh, Nick, this is all audio. We don't do video. Okay. You will, you, uh, so you anyway, so I picked um, 8 millimeter from 1999. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think it's underrated. Like, there, there was a time, like, in the late 90s, I feel like going to 2000, there was a lot of, like, dark crime thread. There was, you know, like, Seven and Bone Collector and all this shit. And this is kind of like a dark film like that in that way. Um I'm sure you guys know the premise, you know, about a snuff film and and, and it, was he's a, high. it was the first time I ever heard that term. That term, yeah. And uh it, it it's just a very dark film. It's got uh James Gandolfini in it. Um I love the chemistry between Cage and Joaquin Phoenix, who he kind of takes with him on on this journey. But I, I, I think it, it slept on the Joel Schumacher film, you know. Like I said, it did well and whatever, but it's kind of like lost the time a little bit. Nobody's You're right. Really, yeah, yeah. You're right. You know, digging that up. But I think it's fantastic. I yeah. just rewatched it. Dark as fuck. I yeah. haven't watched in that movie. Uh, shit, man. I can't even tell you. Probably like when it first came out. I think I watched it twice and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to revisit that. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. I love I love like the eat like so when it comes to horror, which we all love, obviously, um, the evil that men do are like like that's my favorite type of horror, you know, mm-hmm. like the home invasions or or like you said, like that eight millimeter thing where it's just like 
it still feels like it it could happen kind of thing. So I, I I like that. And most of those movies, you know, it'll be classified as a thriller. But you know, if you go on, uh, I mean, you could almost like argue eight millimeter if you take away a lot of like the the action parts of it could be. You know, it's it's a horrific premise for sure. Sure. Yep. Um, now, as so far as films that he made that I haven't seen, I had his new film on there. The, uh, which I know you've seen, and just last night I watched it. So, oh, how good is that movie? And then I just watched the film, so it's amazing. It it, it's probably one of the best uh, best films he's ever made, in my opinion. I loved it. What'd you say, Nick? Is that where he plays himself? Yeah, yeah. That's, I la- that's my that I want to see. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, I can't say enough good things about it. Then I definitely will in our year end show. I'm sure. Me too. It, fantastic so that uh under the unbearable weight of what the fuck is no, the weight of of unbearable it's some talent like it's a it's a yeah. long ass dumb name yeah <laughs> but uh but the bottom it's great it's so funny so you have nick cage nick yeah i uh that you... movie like is one role that i definitely want to see and the movie that i love nicholas cage in uh is moonstruck wow nice yeah, he uh it's not his typical Nick Cage movie, you know. Uh it's not even that it's underrated. It won a couple of uh Academy Awards. Uh great cast. It reminds me of my loud Italian family that side, you know, and like I could laugh every time I watch it. Uh it introduced me to Dean Martin as a kid, man. That's Amore it was a fucking great tune to hear as you know, growing up. And uh, Nicolas Cage's role, man, he's just, I feel like he's almost cartoonish in it. Like, you know, like just bugging out and, you know, uh, his little thing talking about how he lost his hands and has the whole fucking grudge with his brother and everything. Great. I love it. And uh, I mean, once again, like uh, his family, like his lineage, like everything about like his mom. You know who she is? Obviously, we know, right? No? Nicholas Cage's mom? Yeah. Well, I know, he's, like... He was, he's in the Coppola. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so Talia Shire is his mom. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola is his uncle. You know, definitely, like, you know, he's he's about that life for sure. Uh, but, yo, Nick, watch that movie, because it's fucking yeah. real. Like, it's one of the best movies of the year, for sure. Like, because... Yeah, it, yeah I'm definitely going to watch it. I'm putting it on my list. Langan, so just real quick about like it's just really smart right wasn't it just a really smart writ- writing it was smart writing uh nothing felt forced we've seen you know what like I, i've seen other films where people play themselves and some you know a lot of them are good like the uh, jean-claude van damme film I remember I say that. yeah that was fantastic. but uh cage was great yeah i think it's the, i think one it's one of some of his best work to be honest with you it's it not it's not it, it really because when when we were looking at the shit we're doing the show it, it came up and i was going on imdb and going through all these people's credits i mean what a fascinating <laughs> like bunch of roles this guy had from like you know kind of normal roles starting out and stuff and to this unhinged cage we kind of got later on where he was just doing rattling films off so it's just what a varied career. And I feel like this film is just the perfect encapsulation of all his yeah. style acting. You know what I mean? And Pedro's Pedro's really cool. Really. So good. good. Yeah. So good. good. I mean, um, and I, I laughed my ass off and I have to in a film like I'll get a You know, I'm a chuckler. Yeah. You know, a grin, you know, but I was laughing. I was laughing. Yeah. You got to watch it, Nick, for sure. Um, So I'm going to go Lord of War from 2005 is a role of his that i feel is super underrated um just like random so 2005 i guess it was like that time where like streaming wasn't really a thing and like movies really kind of could fall under the radar like that's when like things were going to like video stores still and you're mm-hmm. like you know like idiocracy or something you're like hey, right this didn't really get a release and it's just randomly here uh, Lord of War was one of those where he plays like a a gun dealer. I think like a Russian guy, and a, a Jared Leto is his um, um, his brother. It's a real character, real story. This is the guy that they were 
trying to swap out like uh like Russians wanted him back cuz I think he's he's sitting somewhere in a US jail prison. Uh very good, very good. Lord of War. And uh a role of his that I haven't seen but people love is bringing out the dead. I never saw that one. Uh, I love that movie, man. Yeah. What is he, right? Yes. He's a uh what is he like the paramedic, the ambulance paramedic in yeah. Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, it's good, man. Rosanna, I oh, know Patricia Arquette is like the co-star in it and stuff. And yeah, it's it's got a good soundtrack, and he's uh, he's a fucking goes nuts. Cool. And uh, Tom it, Sizemore, like yo, Tom uh, Sizemore. Has anyone fallen further from the fucking stars? I was watching um, Randy Quaid. Well, all right. <laughs> I don't know. It's still. Yeah. Like, I'd be a little bit undersized more, but very close running. Yeah. <laughs> great, great buddy movie right there. That is, I think you wouldn't see that. Honestly, if Tarantino's listening to this, make that your <laughs> your 10th movie. Somehow crowbar those two guys in there. So Tom Sizemore was just, I was watching something on Showtime. Oh my God, I forgot what it was. It was just so bad. Like, oh, the Meg. The Meg, <laughs> no, Megalodon <laughs> Rising. Oh, oh my God! I, I'll send you guys the trailer when we're done here. Yeah. It, it's just like you know when you tomorrow when we wake up and we go to work like this. That's probably how he feels. <laughs> like he was just like, <laughs> all right, I guess I'm gonna do Megalodon the Rising, and they're gonna pay me like three hundred bucks a week to sit here or something. It's just so fucked up. Yeah, uh, I was impressed. I met uh, Sizemore at a chiller theater like about ten years ago. And usually when these guests show up, they have a whole table of like eight by tens and stuff. First of all, he was late. He showed oh, up right. three or four hours and it definitely looked like he was preoccupied with something. And he only had like three pitches on his table. And it was like one of them was a headshot from like when he didn't look like that anymore. And then the <laughs> other one was some random picture of him with Stallone in lockup. Okay. And then the other one was the war movie that he did. Uh Saving the Private Ryan. Big... Right, right. Yes. Yeah. It was a picture with him and uh you know it wasn't like even like a great picture or whatever, but like that's all he had on this table. And I'm like, fuck, this guy had a lot of roles and I I guess he just doesn't give a shit. Unreal. But I still went out one of the It you know? was in time, probably. Yeah. Guy. He just looked like you know life defeated him. Skagnetti yeah. on Skagnetti. Yeah, dude, have some of that shit. That would, he should have had nine pitches from Natural Born Kills. Yeah, for sure. Choking out the chick, fucking laying in bed with his fucking panties on. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Anything. He's, he's like, uh, let me get uh me and Stallone in lockdown from like nineteen. I don't know when the what fucking year was that. Eighty eight, I think. Eighty. I think 80. it was eighty nine. Yeah. I uh, just read that recently because, because uh, you know the Tulsa King thing is uh, got me my Stallone groove again, and uh, I like I like Lock Up a lot. Yeah, I mean, listen, I love that he's doing a TV show. Um, yeah, I, Langan, I don't know if you started Tulsa King, but it's like anything to do <laughs> with mob stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, sure, Tyler Sheridan, you know that wrote. Um, what did he do? Yellowstone. And a few other things did it, and it's very, it's fun. It's absolutely outrageous, kind of like Sons of Anarchy, where it's like, as long as you don't be- want any type of reality in the show, you're okay, right. <laughs> you know. So it just got also greenlit for the second season, which is cool. And in the last episode, the third, uh, they had the band Idols, uh, one of my favorite songs of uh, last year, the song "War" during one of the scenes, the car crash scene. Very cool. That was good. Uh, cool. Let's move on to let's do uh, Catherine Keener Langan. Catherine Keener. Um, let's see. I, I mean, she got nominated for an Emmy for the role I'm about to mention, but I still don't think people recognize how good it was. But because uh, the American, an American crime from 2007. Good. I have uh, that mentioned too. You do, yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, it's based on a true story of this girl's. Sylvia like and I'm not going to get it it's so 
horrific. Like the reality of this whole story is disgusting, but she plays the mother who imprisoned this girl, basically essentially in the basement and allowed neighborhood kids were torturing and whatnot. But it's, it's such a good role because uh, the character is not quite on insane at first, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, she almost seems normal, a little rough around the edges, but as she turns into this monster, by the end of it, I just think the arc is incredible and she just crushes it. Great cast in that movie too. Uh, uh, James Franco's in it. Uh, Ellen Page, Elliot Page. Uh, it's it's great. Great movie. Yeah. I, I, he, so it's Ellen Page that is in the movie? Yeah, Ellen Page is yeah. in the movie. Because um, I think it was like 2008 maybe. All right, yeah. Yeah. So I remember this because I watched uh Jack Ketchum, the girl the next girl door. door. And right. it's the same story. I had no idea. So this is on my to like Catherine Keener roles that I want to watch. So I didn't know it was the same story because I saw the the Ketchum version, which was directed by Lucky McKee. And that, like, like you said, it's a horrific. It's a horrific story that I didn't even think was real. I thought Jack just wrote the story, but I guess he took it from actual that one. Events. The the girl next door definitely plays a little more of a horror kind of, okay. and Lucky McKee doing it, it all makes sense. And this isn't as quite as graphic, I don't think, you know. But uh, but the performances are great. Cool. Um, so give me something that of hers that you want to see. Uh. This was tough for me because uh, what what did I have here? Bear with me here. I can't read my own writing. <laughs> I got my shit written down on a pizza, uh, a paper plate. Fuck yeah! Is that is that uh is that the uh, what is that tombstone? Uh no, just the regular paper plate. <laughs> oh, I thought I, I thought it was like the bottom of like a frozen pizza. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> no, just a paper plate. I usually when I go to the pizza places, I'm like, oh, can you get a couple of paper plates? And that's my uh silverware. There you go. <laughs> Not silverware, my uh china, whatever. You're gonna have to edit this. Hold on. Why the fuck this shit is clipped off here? Hold on. I don't even have a role that I don't even uh that I want to see for her. So <clears throat> yeah, why didn't I have one? Mine Maybe is have- uh my, mine is that the one that you mentioned. Yeah, I didn't really have a role. Uh, All right, then whatever. That's fine. For her that I hadn't seen. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> I'll just clip it. I'll, I'll, I'll clip it together. I'll clip it together and people will be like, oh, Langan forgot to make this pick. Uh, so, Nick, w- what did you have for Catherine? Or you didn't do uh, Catherine? No, I, I didn't, but I can pull yeah. one out that I do like. Um, being John Malkovich. Okay. She's so sexy in that movie. Like I love that, and the movie's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I just love the whole premise of it. And um, yeah, you know, I think that movie. Uh, I don't know if it got. Does it have like a cult following? I think it does. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I like the I like the part where malkovich goes inside his own head and like you know they all they say is malkovich 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 and like he plays all different uh characters of malkovich and yeah it's just it's cool very cool so uh yeah yeah, the first time i ever came across her was in that into the wild right i think that movie with Uh, oh yeah yeah, where she, uh, Emil Hirsch, I guess was the guy, and like that story, I just remember like you know Ed, Eddie Vedder was attached to it with the songs and stuff, but I didn't pick that. Uh, what I did pick was her role in my favorite TV show of last year, which no one ever mentions. No one ever talks about brand new cherry flavor. Oh, that's yeah. what that was good. that's the thing I haven't seen. Okay, brand new cherry oh. flavor. Uh, so yeah. we have the vice versa. <laughs> yeah, because the one that I picked is a, an American crime for that I want to see, and yes, my favorite. Like, she is so good in branding cherry flavor. All eight episodes, all like the three main characters. It's up on Netflix. Nick, I don't know if you saw it. Did you? Yes. Watch it? How yes, good was I, that? It was mind blown. Right. Yeah, and it it made me like want. I couldn't wait till the next thing. I binged it like right straight through. I I, I was waiting for one of the episodes to like shit the bed. 
and they didn't. It was like eight in a row. Uh, and it was just fuck. It was just fucking great, man. The guy, who who, made, huh? Who made that? I don't know, but they they deserve uh, more. <laughs> What's the premise? The premise. Okay, so this girl, uh, the main girl, who's really good, uh, goes to Hollywood. You know, she has a movie, uh, or she yeah, she brings like a short movie and brings it to this director, who's kind of he mentors her until he like makes a move on her. And then from there, she goes to this witch lady played by Catherine Keener, who like uh, puts like a curse on him and mm -hmm. it's a really fucked up curse. And then from there, it's just kind of like I'm <laughs> dealing with it. Yo, it's, lots of cats and lots of fucked up shit. <laughs> it's re it reminds me, somebody said video drone. It's very like uh, Cronenberg with yes. the body horror. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. I can see that definitely influenced by Cronenberg. Yeah, listen, you got to watch it for sure. So um, it, it makes you feel kind of uneasy. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really like the man, everything about it. Like I said, I you watch eight episodes of something and you expect, you know, eventually to for them to take a pivot or a turn that doesn't really sit well. But all eight in a row, it was my favorite show of last year, you know, when we did our best of list. We do like a best of everything, right? We have like all episodes sure. of like best of TV, best album, best rock album, best hip hop album, best. Of like... Course. It's like my everyday talk. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's do Kurt Russell. Uh, yeah. Lang. American treasure. Kurt Russell. He is. Uh, another one with an amazing bio of, of, of films. But I went with. um uh, not an action role, which he's, I think he's primarily known for, obviously, but Overboard from 1987. Yeah. I, I, that movie, I rewatched it before we made this list, and it's still it's like a wholesome kind of movie. Like you could actually like watch it with your kids or something like that. But uh, it's great. He's so good in it. It's uh, his his comic delivery is top notch, and. Uh, oh. It, it it was fairly a hit, but I just think it it gets lost in the you know in the in his body of work in the long run. But it, it's so funny. Yeah, that's I mean we all love Overboard for, for sure. And like eighty nine, I remember going to the theaters to watch it. Sure, eighty like seven. Was yeah. it eighty seven? Yeah. Holy shit! So that was like fresh off of like the disappointing box office of Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is funny. Like we said, I said this recently because I, I was rewatching Big Trouble for like the you know hundredth time. Sure. I'm like, how was this a bomb? <laughs> like, how was this a bomb? It's like one of the greatest movies ever. Um, but he he was really funny in Used Cars. That was another older movie. That was the it, one I haven't yeah. seen. You haven't I, seen? Okay. It, yeah, really that I wanted to see. I heard it's a good like like black comedy kind of. It is uh, pretty. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. So, all right, those are your two. Yeah. Like, uh, DC Cab, like around that time that came out. Which one? DC Cab. Was Love like... DC Cab. <laughs> yeah. Yo, because Adam Baldwin was in DC Cab, and that dude should have had a bigger career. I don't know what happened. Bill yeah. Barr was in that. Um, Nick, Adam so... Baldwin is like, uh, what's his name? Vincent D'Onofrio to me. He's like the poor man's Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. He looked the same. Yeah, maybe he could play anything. He can, yeah. <laughs> but he he was the man in DC Cab. Like if you rewatch that, like today, there's just it's like littered. I think the Barbarian Twins were in it too, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ola Ray from Thrillers in it. Yeah, I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. There's so many people. That, it's some weird, uh, weird uh, cameos and stuff. Um. So Nick, give me two Kurt Russells. Uh. Well, I did pick Overboard. So. Okay. Uh, I will say instead of overboard, death proof. I loved him in that. I thought he was great. Never really saw Kurt Russell go there, but he did in this one. I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing this right next to my death proof poster. I got it tattooed on me actually. Holy Definitely. shit. Yeah. Wow. Death proof, man. I just love the whole scene where that turn happens right in front of you where he's talking to Rose McGowan and he's just like left or right. Know, yeah. Dude, so great. You know, yeah. he's all awesome in that role. He's like, oh, he's... that's too bad. Why? <laughs> I, I'm happy that they kicked the shit out of him at the end. That was awesome. And he turned into like this big, 
pussy like running away. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 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 so did you watch I mean, I saw the double feature in the theaters three times. Yeah, yeah. Me too, yeah. I saw it three times because I saw it once and then I was like, Oh, I gotta bring other like I wanted to bring other people and be like, You gotta just watch. Like I know it's long and yeah. stuff, but like it had a very yeah. short run in the theater, I think. It didn't do well. No, no it didn't. It, it it bombed. And actually it would always hold a special place with me because it was the first date I took my ex wife to. Okay. It All was a right. uh, Brian House. And we loved it. You know, I, I still I'll, I'll watch that. I'll watch both of them. But I think I'm yeah. proof a little bit more than I like Planet Terror. I'm I'm vice versa. I I'm I, I like Planet Terror, but I love I still love Death Proof for sure. I, I, I mean listen, just that first initial crash. Dude, it's horrific. Horrific. Yeah. Like, come on, like Linda or whatever that girl's name is, like she like the tire like scraping her fucking face off. The leg going out, you yeah. know, like Lena Frank. Just, oh yeah uh, that, that chase at the end is epic epic stunt yeah yeah with the yeah. girl the uh i can't forget her name zoe 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 something? campbell oh, oh yeah zoe bell oh zoe Amazing. bell zoe bell yeah yeah Amazing. um that so was... what's what's a kurt russell role that you haven't seen captain ron yeah me too i don't know like i guess i just never gave it a shot I guess I'll give it a chance, but I don't know if it's going to hold up. Yeah. I don't think it ever held, man. <laughs> I heard it's not great, but he's really – he carries it pretty well. Is that Martin know? Short? Uh, is that who's – I don't you know? even – Yeah, Captain, I feel like yeah. I feel like it is. Um, all right, so I'm going to do mine. So yeah. a, a role of his that I love that no one really ever mentions is Tequila Sunrise. Mm. Very cool. underappreciated, so it's like him – uh, he's like a cop. Mel Gibson's a drug dealer, and Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, is like their love interest and their friends. I, it's just really good, like just really good, like love triangle of three people that are just on three different planets. What uh, year was that? Nineteen eighty nine. Okay. Uh, and then he made a movie in twenty sixteen with Mark Wahlberg, uh, Deepwater Horizon, which I always meant to watch about mm. like um just like oil rig, like blowing up and like Peter Berg directed it would I love, you know, shout out to shocker who would have known. Oh yeah. Who would have known that dude was going to be crushing the right. movies. Unbelievable. Right. Uh, even though shocker was terrible, but you know, he, 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 he rose above and became a really West good director. Pride. <laughs> good uh, Horace. Horace Pinker. Yeah. And I didn't even, I never realized to like later on that Horace Pinker was Mick, Mitch Pelagy who then played uh he was uh, in three o'clock hot he was like the security guard yeah oh shit that's right that's horace bank knocked out yeah oh man i gotta watch that again i love that movie so we used to do um screenings uh through the podcast over at the bolton center in, in uh, bayshore uh so we would pick a movie a month for like uh you know like a screening and we did three o'clock high sure <laughs> We did Midnight Madness, The Burbs, a lot of cool stuff. That was a lot of fun to oh. do. Uh, cool. So I know that you picked like two other random ones, Nick. Yeah. What, what were they? You said uh, Kathy Bates? Uh, I picked uh, Clint Eastwood. I love Gran Torino. Uh, I thought he was just made for that role but he probably wrote it back in like the 60s and was like you know what i'm gonna sit on to this when i'm like you know old and ready and he was ready for that role and uh i think only him like only clint eastwood could get away with a role like that because i don't think anyone else could ever sit on screen and say what he says in it and guess take it or whatever you know but i like the whole trying to mentor the kid story line it's always cool when you have like the older guy trying to like you know give him knowledge and everything and yeah i love gran torino i thought that was a good flick cool. uh, um the movie that i've wanted to see him in is one of his uh like random roles that he did that uh it's all the women like fantasize over it too it's the bridges of madison county oh, okay yeah i'd I never that. I never saw it. I heard great things about it. And uh, 
I just I don't know. I'd like to see I I'd like to see Clint Eastwood go there and see what uh what he has as far as like that type of role, you know. I heard in the last scene you get to see his asshole. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> An overhead shot, please. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think he's in the shower. <laughs> what about the movie with the monkey? Oh, that. Babe and Loose. Yeah, dude, I love that. <laughs> I saw that that is- a- <laughs> or orangutan. I don't mean to miss name. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, no, but... You don't want to miss animal and animal. Um, <laughs> I, was I love for... that. I saw the the mule. That was like the last thing, like the most cor- current thing of his that I saw. I thought it was pretty good. He was like acting role. What's that? Yeah, that was his last acting role up to date, right? No, Cry Macho was. Oh, uh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, Cry Macho just came out maybe like a year, probably like a year ago. Yeah, but, no, I didn't see. It. The mule is like him, just like driving for like the cartel, and he's like yeah. an old guy. And uh, yeah, I mean, I like shit like that for sure. It's cry macho about Hector Camacho. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know what? It's... No I... mas, no mas. <laughs> I can't say. I'd have to look up the synopsis, but I'm gonna okay. guess. I'm Get gonna back. Say, to... I'm gonna say maybe. <laughs> um. So yeah, man, Nick, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for talking. Yeah, it was to awesome. Me. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, man. thanks for uh, reaching out. And uh, I know you play in a band called Demon Scar as well. Yes. Right? So, uh, how'd that name come about? Well, we were just kicking around some ideas, and uh, just I think one of them was like Devil's Devil Scar, and then uh, I think my guitarist was like Demon Scar, and I'm like. Yo, that's awesome, but don't do it, Demon Scar. Do it like one word. One word, yeah. So, yeah, it just stuck. And uh, we were actually in a band together um, 1999. We started, it was a metal band. And that's like when we used to play at like Ground Zero a lot in Belmore. And like that's when like the emo thing was coming on. And like uh, we, we played gigs with like Taking Back Sunday and like Brand New, and we totally did not fit in all those bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we played for like two years and then we went and did other music things. And we've been playing together since 2017. You know, we got back together. Uh, and um, yeah, things are going good, man. Next week we're actually playing the whiskey in LA. Oh, that's right. How cool is that? I, dude, it's 30 years in the making, man. Yeah. You know, I not think of a better person to do it with. Then my boy, because we've been talking about that place. I'm a diehard, you know, Motley Crue fan. And to play where they, uh, you know, started, it's like a, uh, it's it's a dream come true. And you got tickets to see them too in February, right? Yes. They're, uh, they're doing the first two gigs with, uh, with John Five. They're doing like a warm up to uh, their uh, stadium tour. Okay. Because so Mick is gone. Yeah. Or if they're only arena shows for that year until they had other shit but for now but it looks like as of now it's the first two shows with uh with john five so i'm curious to see i've been seeing some of his instagram stories and he rips the tunes i mean he's, he's, he's... Honest, dude i'm not trying to put them down in any way but i feel like he's overqualified man i think he's a fucking virtuoso bro yeah, I mean, it's like when I saw, like when we saw, like uh, you know, fucking uh, a Lombardo with the Misfits. I'm like, yeah. what's, yeah, he, he, what's he gonna do? Right? I mean, <laughs> you know, he's great at the, you know, Lombardo and the Misfits is great, but like, still, man, like, I feel like he had to like, he had to it. rein it, yeah, because he, he was like, yeah. I feel like he was done with the set two hours before they, they, <laughs> just like, all right, we're still going, but like, so okay, so you're a big crew fan. Um, what do you think of the Dirt? Loved it, loved it. Me too. We we all loved it. I actually, we might have done an episode on it. Um, I uh, I I read the dirt um, when it first came out, and then when they were talking about they were going to put this in a movie, I'm like, wow, this is going to be interesting. Because first of all, I couldn't see anyone playing them. I'm like, who the fuck are they going to play? And then when I first heard Machine Gun Kelly was going to play Tommy Lee, I'm like, oh boy, here we yeah. go. And then. He Dude, he's like it. one of my favorite parts of the fucking movie. He know? killed. He was. He was, he was like. He couldn't have been any more perfect. No, and you know the dude that you know from Game of Thrones uh, played Mick Mars. He was amazing. Mm-hmm. And, you know they were all great. 
And uh, they, I thought that they did a, a really awesome job, man. You know, for people that don't know anything about them, I guess it's a good starting point to watch that because it just shows you the self-destruction of a band, like when they had it all and they just like pissed it away multiple times. Now, um, for for a guy like you, that's like, uh, you know, obviously we're casual fans. Like to me, like, you know, everything up to like a decade of decadence, like I was in. But then after that, you know, I, I love, you know, I think Angie, Angie was on that killer. Angela was on. Yeah, decade- Angela, Angela. And yeah. uh, Primal Scream. Like, I remember being, like, 12 and hearing that riff and being like, I don't even know how, what he's doing, but I love that. Um, so for a guy like you that probably followed them even later on, do you want new music or are you happy just with, like, a legacy set? Either way, man. Yeah. I mean, like, like to hear what they have. Like, some of their later songs that they put out, like If I Die Tomorrow, I thought was pretty cool. That was pretty good. Uh, you know, Um Nikki has a great writing uh, partners. You know, he has uh, James Michael and uh, and DJ Ashba, which are totally two great yeah. music. You know, and uh, I really dig the stuff that he did with 6 a.m. So, you know, I feel like it was very influenced by those guys, like some of their later things, like the Saints of the Los Angeles album was really fucking good, man, for, I could, for them to come out and release that. That so title. yeah, I would like to hear, uh, you know, a new tune maybe, but that I don't know if for an album. But I'm fine with. Uh, I take it as a blessing every time I get another shot on the merry-go-round. Same. To yeah, guys play, man. You know. Yeah. Um. And w- w- our our friend Jeff, w- where did he play in six a.m.? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. played on. I don't know which album it was. Uh, like that's probably the last one before they took a hiatus or whatever. I, I don't know. The name of it yeah oh it's like the double one volume one and volume two i'm not sure we yeah whatever the last one they did that's what he played on in the studio oh, cool. yeah, yeah yeah i and how it, do you feel about like it, it's always on like every blabber mouth loud wire whatever vince's vince's singing how do how do you feel as a fan him coming okay. out so um he gets ripped apart and it was justified, you know, like I really disliked first of all, when he did the whole announcement of the final tour every step of the way, I thought they, they did it right. They made money and everything, but they also did it wrong. They put Alice Cooper to open up fucking Alice Cooper smoked them off the stage. Every yeah. fuck you're going to have to bring a fucking sure. a game. Great. and you can't be Vince Neil like he was on that tour, but he did it. And I feel like now when they came back last year to do that stadium tour, he totally redeemed himself because I feel like there's a shelf life for this music and these guys are getting older in age and I got to face the facts, man. Some of them just can't play like they used to and sing like they used to, and they're going to need that backing track, man. So they got the right backing track for him and they're making him sound better. And I'm all for that to an extent. Because last week I went to go see Wasp. Oh, okay. Hmm. No more. Please don't do it. All, to yeah. So it was all a track? It was a whole the whole band. Like, it was so weird. I'd never seen anything like it. And Blackie was, like, on this, like, big fucking, like, stand. And, like, it was, like, uh, he was hidden. and But you could totally tell that he sounded just like the album, you know? So yeah. I had a couple of drinks in me and I was singing along and having a good time, but still, man, like, I don't know if you want to really go out and do that. Well, that that's how I felt. Blackie like- and Robert Smith are looking so alike. <laughs> yeah. Like brothers, you know, absolutely. You know what? Until I see them both in the same room, I'm going to have questions. <laughs> All bets are off. <laughs> but uh, I, same thing, like, you know, um, anytime I mention like Guns N' Roses, like I won't pay to go see Guns N' Roses, but the last two times I saw them, it was free, so I just go, and it's like it's almost like I don't understand how he gets away with singing. I mean, they've been on tour for the last like three years. It seems like and nonstop. They keep on adding more legs. It's crazy because it like if it doesn't like he can't sing. Like he yeah. he genuinely like he makes Vince Neil sound like fucking Frank Sinatra. And that's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> no. 
when they're hitting notes like that in his youth, you know what I mean? You but I mean, some guy, Sebastian Bach still sounds good, you know? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And those are tough. Like he did the Slave to the Grind album sure. just recently, and it's like, holy shit, man. Like we, I didn't go to that show. I wanted to, and for some reason there was like uh, some kind of conflict. I, had, I think I had something else going on or I was away. But uh, yeah, I've always been a fan of that album you know uh slave to the grind and well, you know, those I had the two. those first two I had the opportunity to open up for him uh like 15 years ago and uh really such a nice guy man down to earth and uh he treated me you know treated me nice man so I can't ask for anything more you know he played at a club I worked at and he was super cool he stayed till everybody's autographs were signed he was hanging out drinking beers with the bus boys and stuff and that being said, though, I totally can also get why you being in a band with him probably <laughs> rough, probably very rough. Yeah, must have did something really fucked up to those guys for not for them to not even consider to reunite because I think Skid Row reuniting, like if it was a package deal, they could go out, they could probably play like the Paramount, and I think they would do well. Sure. You know? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. But they're adamant, dude. They'll like fucking hire. 12 guys to replace like you know a 12th singer rather than to go back and he's been like dudes let's go i'm here you know like yeah so he, maybe, yeah, it must he, have been a really fucking uh long strenuous uh five or six years that they played together <laughs> you go on that super group show a little bit like oh, and when like yeah. he's drunk on red wine and he's got scotty and talking to him like into a corner <laughs> like i'm like oh, i got man. i got two words <laughs> Punisher, dude. I got two words for you. Savage animal. <laughs> animal. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, he, I, I felt so awkward watching these guys interact. Man, what a great, what a great show to just, like, it was kind of like a train wreck. I and love just, it. I know. It was, it was really like, fun. The surreal life, but, you know, like, band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. But, uh, cool. Yo, thanks for hanging yeah. out. And, thanks, uh, yeah, you man. Know. I was, thank you guys for having me. I had a blast. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna uh put. I'm gonna probably put this up on Friday. I'll put like the band link so people could follow you and all that other stuff. And Perfect. uh man, anytime you want to just come and hang out with us, you feel free. Perfect. Thank you guys. Yeah, anytime, man. You guys fucking need uh, you know, talk about anything. I'm uh, I'm down because I speak your language. Get, so <laughs> get you get get you on the Wu Tang episodes too. Hell so. yeah. All right. Uh, yo, actually, real quick. Iron Man or only built for Cuban links? Or liquid swords? Uh, liquid swords. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, right I'm, I'm going, I'm I'm going Raekwon, but yeah. I'll just leave it. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like a, a 9.9 .9 versus 10, you know. It's yeah, exactly. I mean, they're all great. Yeah. So all right, guys. Later. Later. Later.